Hello, friends. So, I don't exactly have the spoons to hop in front of a camera right now, so I will be doing the <laughs> the intro this way. I have already finished making this, the TVE21-1903 trumpet skirt in the round length, uh, and I've also made the dip waist belt as well. Uh, I also have plans to make a blouse and possibly like a lace capelet and maybe an Eaton jacket to go along with it. So it may end up being a many, many, many parts uh, series. Not, not really all that many many's. Uh, because we are stuck in summer right now, I made the skirt in a linen viscose blend, which even though I did make it in black, it is a little bit cooler to wear. Alright, so um, I guess we should get to it. Once again, it all starts with cutting the pattern from the fabric. I use pattern weights because I feel like pinning the pieces down warps the edges. Probably not by enough to warrant that reaction from my brain, but it is what it is. seams, but mostly off camera, because that's not the interesting construction bits. vertical seams, because we must have crisp seams. The placket was then pressed in half, and the edges zigzagged to prevent fraying. Then I stitched along the seam allowance, in preparation for the eyes. Using a friction pen, I marked where the eyes should extend to, as well as individual eye placement. I stitched those eyes on by hand, then pinned the placket onto the back opening of the skirt.
The placket was then stitched on by machine. I cut the ruffle pieces next. I didn't have enough of the lining fabric left, which I would have preferred, but I'm sure you'll recognize this fabric. I cut five panels, going all the way across the 44 inch wide fabric. Then I pinned all of those panels together into one continuous loop of skulls and roses. I stitched those seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance to hide the selvage, as opposed to the half inch allowance used for the rest of the skirt. Pressing the seams wasn't too painful, 
but I'd be lying if I said the same about pressing the hem allowance. I think that took me about three days because I procrastinated so much. It's boring and burns sometimes, okay? Stitching the hem didn't take nearly as long, but it did take almost 20 minutes, which is a long time for one seam by machine. had about six inches of bobbin thread left when I pulled it out of the machine. I choose to see that as a win. I marked the hem of the lining by about three and three eighths inches and trimmed away the excess. Then I pinned the lining to the skirt at the waist edge, and pinned the pleats into the center back, keeping the lining out of the way on the hook side. top stitched the center backs. After that, I hand stitched the hooks onto the right side of the back opening, keeping the lining pinned out of the way. Once those hooks were on, I was able to fold the lining to the underside of them, with the hook bit peeking out to catch the eyes on the other side. It was then hand-stitched in place.
With the center backs taken care of, I could now focus on the waistband. I pinned it, stitched it off camera, then pinned the other edge to the lining side and top stitched on the machine. I pinned and gathered the ruffle off camera because I needed to use my dress form for that. Here's the attaching of that ruffle. Then I marked the hem of the outer skirt layer at 2 inches longer than the lining layer. I'd had to mark the hem before putting on the ruffle, which is that line of pink basting. Here I'm marking it half an inch longer for attaching the facing. It was then cut away as cleanly as possible, and that half inch was pressed up toward the waistband. The next step was to make the bias facing, which is a process that I did mostly off camera. Here I am cutting the three and a half inch strips. I then pressed the long edges of the bias binding under by half an inch. It took many eternities. The facing was pinned to the skirt and hand basted in place, so it wouldn't have a chance to buckle under the presser foot. Then it was sewn down by machine. I tried to keep it as close to the folded edge of the facing as possible, which is hard to see here.
Then I flipped all of that under, and used one line of hand stitching to gather the top edge, and another to pad stitch the facing in place. There was a lot of hand basting in this garment, friends. I wanted to see if I could sew this in place as invisibly as possible, so I used a blind hem stitch. It was very fiddly in this case because of those gathering stitches, and it's really hard to see any detail in this shot. Once the facing was in place, I was able to remove all the basting stitches. It had taken a couple hours to install them, but it took less than five minutes to remove them. The last thing I had to do was sew on the hook and bar to the waistband. And it was finished! And there it is. This garment was much more tedious to make than I had anticipated. But I finished it. So it clearly wasn't that bad. Oh look! Happy little skulls! If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next week with a very short video about a belt. Until next time, friends.